Hey, how y'all doing out there? I got some old messed up news for y'all. R. Kelly is letting it be known that the real reason why he in jail is because Tasha K put all his personal business out there illegally, and that's why it was impossible for him to have a fair trial. Y'all need to listen to some of the things R. Kelly had to say. And if you want to hear the whole interview, head over to Corey Holcomb's YouTube page because he got it all. But I'm about to play for y'all the part that I found interesting because R. Kelly was going in on Tasha K. Tasha K, who federal law enforcement information with my girlfriend at the time, who after seeing that restricted information became very, very angry with me to the point she came to the visit at the MCC in Chicago where I was being detained. And at that visit, she did nothing but curse me out, telling me about things I had said to my other girlfriend things I had told my other girlfriend and my attorney, of which neither of those things she should have known about. Because I was only talking to my other girlfriend on the BOP's phone. And I only talked to my lawyers on the BOP's phone. So how could she have known about not only my conversations with my other girlfriend, but also with my attorneys? How could she have known? She would repeat exactly what I said on the emails to my other girlfriend. And she was very upset that I had given my other girlfriend a nickname, which was Cookie. Which, by the way, they talk about that in, in the search form where I called my other girlfriend Cookie in the search form. And she yelled at me saying, I know you call her Cookie. Don't lie to me. I saw the emails. And she was right. I did give my other girlfriend that nickname, Cookie. But how did she know? Who showed her my emails? Then she went on yelling out things like, I also heard you telling your attorney that she was not going to leave your, her for me. In which was right again. Because I did talk to my attorney and tell him that and more. Then she yelled out and said, don't lie to me because I heard you talking on the phone. I knew, I know your fucking voice. And when she said that to me, I was dumbfounded trying, trying to figure out how the hell she knew these things. She stated, she started calling me liars and all kind of names telling me to get rid of my other girlfriend and if I didn't then she was going to leave and do what she had to do and I told her I was not going to leave my other girlfriend but if either of them wanted to leave then I would respect that and honor that and that wasn't the answer she wanted to hear. In fact, it was it only made her angrier. And when she saw that yelling and cursing me out and threatening me was not going to change my mind, she told me I had done. She told me I had no idea what I had done. And after that, she left the visit. That was the last time I had seen her. But I know without a doubt that when she left that visit, she was furious and scorned by whatever emails she had seen between me and my other girlfriend, phone calls between me and my attorney, obviously. And on top of all of that, I had told her I was not leaving my other girlfriend for her even after she had threatened me. This incident took place in 2019. So when I went to trial in New York in 2021, the same girlfriend that had come to see me at the visit in 2019, who is now my ex-girlfriend, had become the government star witness testifying against me in that New York trial. 
And she definitely lived up to... This call is from a federal prison. And she definitely lived up to the name Star Witness. The reason I say that is because every bit of anger, every bit of jealousy and hatred that I saw in her eyes at that visit back in 2019 was the same anger, jealousy, and hatred that I saw in her eyes when she was on the witness stand. Except it had grown and now looked like a woman that was truly scorned, seeking revenge, and had the whole government backing her up. Well, now I have, now I have obtained a, a search warrant that was executed on the BOP disciplinary hearing officer A, who the government continues after four years calls her officer A. The search warrant on Officer A was executed back in February 2020 before I had ever gone to trial. The search warrant shows, the search warrant shows that the BOP officer had illegally accessed my federal law enforcement information 153 times within a six month period, which means for six months she was doing this. The search warrant shows the BOP officer A had illegally scanned 12 pages of my federal restricted law enforcement information and sent it to her own personal Gmail account, her own personal Gmail account. The search warrant also shows that the BOP officer A had illegally shared my private restricted law enforcement information with a famous and very influential blogger by the name of Tasha K. The search warrant shows that Tasha K had illegally received all of my federal restricted law enforcement information from the BOP officer A. And the search warrant also shows that Tasha K illegally shared my private information while having glasses of wine with the entire world, including people who were illegally influenced by that federal restricted law enforcement information becoming a government star witness against me in my case. If all this was in the search warrant, which was executed on February 2020, then this means that the government knew about BOP Officer A and the blog of Tasha K before I had ever gone to trial. So if this is the case, if the government was knowledgeable about all these crimes being committed against me, all of my federal law enforcement information being stolen, shared by BOP Officer A, Bogatasha K, government witness, government witnesses being tampered with. Why did the trial continue on without a full investigation being done? Why weren't there any charges brought against BOP Officer A? Natasha K. These were federal charges. These were federal crimes being committed. Yeah. When the government was well aware of it, there is a search warrant, a search warrant that confirms their knowledge of these crimes. This officer is not a kid. Knew exactly what she was doing when she gave all of my veteran federal restricted phone calls and emails to the blog of Tasha K prior to my trial. This call is from a federal prison. The officer was well aware of the possibilities of what giving all of my federal information to a blogger could do to me and my case. Officer A knew that it could hurt my case, in which it did. This is not just some DOP employee or some security guard we're talking about, but this is a judge in the Bureau of Prisons who committed these federal crimes against me. There is a professional code of ethics that these people are supposed to follow, that they are trained to follow. And they took a note promising you, me, and the public that they would follow that code of ethics. Because that code of ethics represents what? Integrity. Honesty, law, and justice are supposed to look 
like. It's supposed to represent what our Constitution, our due rights, and our equal rights are supposed to look like. Which is why this disciplinary hearing officer is, and what she did is problematic. She showed no integrity, no honesty, no kind of respect for that code of ethics. She showed no respect for her job, her colleagues, the law, or our judicial system. When she decided to break those laws, jeopardize my rights to a fair trial. Which ultimately jeopardized my life and my freedom. Now, some people, they're going to say, well, he had his day in court. He was found guilty by a jury of his peers. Well, here's the problem with that. The jury. They do absolutely nothing about a federal BOP disciplinary hearing officer stealing and scanning, sharing all of her restricted jail records by recording phone calls with a YouTube blogger who was sharing those jail records with a with government witnesses in the very same trial that that jury was sitting in. And I know that there are people out there that may not like me or believe everything they hear about me. It's okay because you are entitled to your opinions of me, R. Kelly. And I respect that. But my constitutional rights, they're supposed to look just like your, your constitutional rights. My due process, R. Kelly's due process, is supposed to look just like your due process. There should not be a celebrity's version of the Constitution or due process. My freedom is not a celebrity. My freedom is not a color. It is not a price tag or some prosecutor's trophy. But my freedom... It lies in the midst of the investigation of this BOP officer who stole my records, who stole my recorded phone calls and shared them illegally. That's why I want everybody to write to the Department of Justice. Hey, brother, when I tell my people about this, they're going to write. Man, it's so much corruption involved in the R. Kelly case. It's safe to say that he innocent. I guess we not allowed to have a black Hugh Hefner or Elvis Presley. It's a shame, too, especially how the system used women to strip men of all their money. All that tricking didn't pay off for this man in the end. Tasha K used her podcast to tear down the king of r &B only to be taken down by the Jennifer Lopez of rap. Everybody out here at each other's throats. By the looks of this, R. Kelly will be home soon because people broke the law in order for him to be up in jail. And eventually, justice will be served. Y'all gonna have to let me know how y'all feel about this in the comment section. Make sure y'all do me a favor. Hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also hit that notification button, y'all. And hit that cash app too. Dollar sign Sean Blaze Docs. I sure appreciate that. One more thing. Subscribe to my channel if that's what you want. Subscribe to my channel if that's what you want. But if that's not what you like, then you must be a punk. Hold on now, here we go.